Okay, my friends, as I showed in my other video, and I will show again, 1958, they were doing fecal matter transplants for this Clostridium difficile, and it has almost 100% cure rate, 95, ni over 95%. Now, more than 100,000 infections, or half a million people get it here in every year in the United States, and over 100,000 of them develop among nursing home residents, and then they die almost immediately. Say they die within approximately 29,000 patients died within 30 days of the initial diagnosis. Of those, about 15,000 deaths were estimated to be directly attributed to C. diff. It, you know, they have other underlying conditions, but it's all attributed to their bacteria. And this is what they're dying from. There's no reason for them to die from this, none whatsoever. You see this? They know that this is back in 2012. Fecal microbiota transplant relapsing Clostridium difficile. They get it three times and more, and, and they, they, they have to take the drugs. They won't let you have this. They won't let you have this, and here's what it does for you. And they won't allow it, and they've known this since 1958. Fecal matter transplants, high cure rates of multiple reoccurrence CDI, 83% cure rate on multiple ones where they die after 29 days usually. And then from 28, from 83% to nearly 100% cure rate, reported safety supports the viability of this fecal matter transplant as an acceptable treatment method. This is long ago. This is 2010 this paper came out. In a recent systematic review based on seven studies represent the best available clinical research on FMT for this Clostridium difficile. Analysis concluded most patients, 83%, experienced resolution of the diarrhea immediately following the first FMT procedure. And um, it's safe and effective, and they will not allow you to have this until you fail the expensive drugs three times, and you're ready to die, and then they'll let you have the fecal matter transplant, and then you're cured. That's insanity. Okay, they've been doing these fecal matter transplants forever. And in, in animals, they've been doing it forever. And animals know enough to eat poop when they need to re refurbish their gut supply. It says the technique came to the attention this century after it was published in a report on his treatment of patients with antibiotic-associated diarrhea with fecal matter transplants by retention enemas. He was using an enema, squirting somebody else's poop into another person. The patients recovered promptly and well from the diarrhea. This was in 1958. Now, in 1978, they went deep into it. See here? They got deep into it. <laughs> Despite the volume of empirical evidence, they knew it was working. It was only 20 years later, in 1978, the value of FMT was widely recognized in treating the refractory intestinal condition, C. diff. Over 95% of cases with, were cured was quick and permanent. This is, this is 50 years ago. It's 50 years ago. They knew this worked. And today, there's still a big mystery, and they charge tons of money. You have to fail the drugs three times. Then they'll allow you to have a fecal matter transplant. Okay, my friends, this, uh, this is just impossible to believe, but it's true. I showed you how effective fecal matter transplant is for reoccurrent C. diff. which is it's, it's for just having C. diff. If you take it, it's, you're done. However... Here's what the government did to you. Is FMT for you? You may be eligible. They'll maybe allow you to have it. If you've had either of the following, two documented where you, they're absolutely certain you tried their drugs. Two documented episodes of mild to moderate C. diff that have not responded to six to eight weeks of treatment with antibiotics. You have to take their antibiotics before they'll let you have something that will save you. And then just before you die, they say, okay, you can have it. Okay, I've shown you that the first line of defense should be 
a fecal matter transplant for CDI. I mean, it's just obvious. It's been known since 1958. However, FDA is just now approving the first fecal matter transplant and issues guidance that says you have to fail drugs three times before we'll allow you to have the thing that will cure you. You see this? This is it's, it's hard for me to believe this could possibly be going on, knowing that we can cure this. The cost of this C. diff was estimated at 5.4 billion in the United States alone, with 4.7 billion incurred in healthcare settings and 725 incurred in the community. The main driver of economic burden is hospitalization and reoccurrence. Billions and billions of dollars. Plus the suffering and the death. Unnecessary. Okay, I showed in this one, gut-brain connection, how autism has basically the same root effect uh, cause as C. diff, as does irritable bowel, as does even your skin conditions, or all kinds of things. Because every single thing in your body that is made is created by an enzyme. The enzyme isn't there, the chemistry doesn't happen. You have to watch this and you'll see it in great detail. It's um, 38 minutes long. It'll be the best 38 minutes you ever spent in your life. Okay, my friends, this is shocking. They all know, I mean, this is Yale. They all know this is called eat, poop, and live. Now, listen to this. This talks about all the digestion and the feces, and it's been, everybody knows about it forever. They've known about it. This goes back to when the Nazis invaded North Africa. They were getting all kind of dysentery. So what they happened was they saw that the, the indigenous people would follow camels around and eat their poop when they had stomach problems. And here's what it says. The camel dung, its true form, would hold a life-saving secret. These people were dying from dysentery. Soldiers were suffering greatly from dysentery. The Nazi's medical corps was brought in to attempt to alleviate the outbreak. They had no idea what to do. Early on, the local nomads were thought to hold a key to the solution because they rarely suffered from it. They didn't ever get it. In fact, when an outbreak of dysentery did occur, or even when slight diarrhea was experienced, the nomads would diligently follow their camels around. When a camel defecated, the nomad would quickly scoop up the dung and ingest some while it was still steaming. I didn't realize how important it is, the quickness of how you react to this bacteria and these enzymes. You can't just let them sit around. Okay, this, I just stumbled across this. This is amazing. Bacterial enzymes. These are the things we're talking about to go in and kill all the bad stuff in you. Like the bacterial enzyme, mammalian, whatever it is, peptase, is stable for several hours. Like bacterial enzymes, it's only stable for several hours at 40 degrees Celsius and shows maximal activity at 50 degrees Celsius only stable for several hours. This is a, this is a little bit of a, a crimp here. Don't forget, 2012, cure rates over 90% being consistently purported from multiple centers. You can't have it until you've failed drugs three times. Now, like I said, don't rely on the government or the FDA or any of these people, the medical industry, to do this. They're obviously not doing it. Since 1958, they've known this. They're talking about it right here 10 years ago. Anyway, thumb this up, please. Subscribe, please. Ring the bell so you get notified. Keep watching. Open your mind up. We need to find somebody that can help with the funding of this. We need to do a database and a collection, but we need some special tools, which are these new light tools that they've just developed at uh, either was Caltech or UC Berkeley, somewhere around there. Go Call was one of the first guys. And now I see there's, they just announced it today, how they're starting to use that same method that he showed four years or so ago. I will show you again because I've been looking deeply into that. It's exactly what we need to determine what bacteria is living where and what bacteria has. You'll be able to see with artificial intelligence by the colors. I'll show you right now. Get ready because we can, we, this, is, this is crazy to do what we're doing. But you can't rely on 
the healthcare industry. It's a, it's, it's really, it appears to me it's a money-making industry. You got to take their drugs or you don't get healthy. <laughs> and you, you don't get healthy from taking the drugs. So you're really screwed. See, this, this just came out today. They're using light microscopes to see smaller than ever before. They're using some of the same techniques we're using by, by focusing the light. And, but they're splitting the beam and they're getting half the energy value, but they're seeing in, in a very, very highly detailed and I'll show you what they can actually see without damaging things. What was happening was the ultraviolet light is too intense for cells. It kills them. So what they did was they divided the light in half and then they and, and photoned them at that half energetic value. And then they put it back together and they could see the full energetic value. It's kind of hard to understand, but what they were doing there's using 400 nanometer light to image the cell and achieve as good of an effect as using 200 nanometer light. That means 200 nanometer means a bing, you get a real powerful bounce back of light. But it's so powerful it killed a cell. 400 nanometers because it's boing and it comes back. It doesn't bother the cell. The cell says, ah, something just bounced off me, no big deal. Ultraviolet though is going to kill it in 200 nanometers. Here's what they did at, I believe it, uh, where did they say this was from? They're talking, I think, Caltech, but I think it was UC Berkeley that first developed this. This is, uh, well, oh yeah, 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 see, Caltech. Okay, this is by Seeker. This guy's name is Gokhal. He's a scientist, and he's re, he. It sounds to me like he's the one that developed this this light Good research. Morning. Something I will never forget: the hair on my hands just stood up. It's a microscopic universe within each cell. This is an unprecedented view of the cellular world, where we can actually see immune cells scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebrafish in real time. Focusing only on the crawling immune cells, we've noticed two classes of them. One team was not hungry at all, but it was very active in terms of trying to figure out, you know, what the environment is. Let me just make a mention of how we're going to use this type of actually photography to watch what these little bits and pieces are doing and the colors. The colors can, are going to be exactly correct. They're going to be exactly correct every time if it's that particular enzyme. And artificial intelligence should be able to tell the colors. And if they see this exact pattern of these colors, they'll say, that's a, a, a Bactolacillus or whatever it is. And they'll know the different species and everything. And then they can categorize them. They say, we see a lot of these. We see only a few of these. We see no, almost none of these. And, th and then they, you, you build a database. And you do it from a person that's healthy, person that's sick, a person healthy, sick, healthy, sick, irritable bowel, melanoma, every every single different disease. And then you categorize them, you lay it in the database, and you say everybody that has this disease virtually has this enzyme missing. This is very not, it's not complicated. It's just detailed, and it's going to take a lot of money, probably, to make these, you know, somebody's going to have to run it. Somebody's going to have to coordinate it. Somebody's going to have to pr provide the equipment. Somebody's going to have to analyze the data. Somebody's going to have to organize all the people. But it's, other than that, we're not looking at a big problem here. To try to figure out what enzymes are missing, that means what bacterias are missing. Because the bacteria is the factory that create the enzymes. The enzymes are the things that that little thing was scooping up. Coming around here, scooping all this stuff up. See so what? Fish in real time. And it Hopes goes out, and it, that went right out into the interstitium to go deliver that package of enzymes.